Okay, so six years ago, at the age of 18, I made the decision not to go to college. It started out as a gap year that turned into six. I was one of the only kids in my entire high school that made that decision. I think a lot of people didn't really understand what I was doing, you know, why I was choosing to take this path. And I think there's a lot of societal pressure to make the responsible decision and get a degree. I come from an immigrant family. And although my parents are very cool and very understanding, explaining this to certain members of my family was not easy. You know, your family wants the best for you, right? And what they think is the best for you is to go to college oftentimes. So I definitely felt a lot of fire on my ass to prove to the world that this was not a mistake, that I was not going to be a failure. I knew very early on that I did not want to go to college. So I didn't bother taking the SATs. I never wrote an application letter to a university. I had no backup plan. That's kind of how I live my life. Then of course, three years ago, I made this video. Now, I come from a family where both of my parents were the first ones in their families to go to college. So is it arrogant for me to make this decision to not go to college? Well, I don't think so, and I'd like to share why I think that. And in that video, I unequivocally say that this was the best decision of my life. And I really meant that. I kind of did the math in my head and was like, yep, this checks out. And now, three years on, I wanted to give an update and share how I feel about all this. Here's the crazy thing. Had I chosen to take the path of higher education, I would still be studying right now if I was going for a master's degree. I'd be finishing this spring. And assuming I just focused on my studies during all that time, I still wouldn't have even started my career. To be honest, uh, today my thoughts are more nuanced on this subject than they were before. It's been a wild ride, you know? Life's a trip, man. So I'm going to split this video up into two parts. The cons of not going to college, and then the pros. Without further ado, let's dive in. The cons. Social life. This was originally a point that I dismissed. I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. But it ended up being a much bigger deal than I realized. You know, a lot of people talk about the social element of the college, you know, university experience, and it's a real thing. It is a great way to meet a bunch of other people. And unfortunately, because of the path that I chose, I didn't have that. I did not have access to that. And the truth is that while I do now consider myself blessed to have this network of really smart, ambitious, and dare I say, attractive people that I can call friends, like close friends. For a long time, I was looking. For a long time, I didn't have that. Here's the thing that's tricky. Okay, I did a video on this recently. The only way that, that friendship in adulthood works is with intentional effort. It doesn't yeah. happen automatically. It's just easier if you're required to spend a good chunk of your day with other adults, which is what happens when you go to university or in like a traditional form of employment. If you don't have either of those though, like me, then it becomes a lot trickier. Like, okay, how do I go about creating those connections? How do I create the, those bridges to connect with people? Especially since I live kind of an unconventional life. And despite the fact that more and more people are questioning the value of higher education, it's still the conventional path, you know? Like I said, there's a lot of societal pressure to do this. And of course it's not impossible. And like I said, I've been able to make these connections. But what I've realized is that you really have to go for it. You have to fling yourself into situations and be as open as you possibly can to connect with other people. Like for example, jumping off cliffs. I don't often talk about my private dating life because it's not really any of your business and I don't feel any obligation to share every aspect of my life on the internet. But I will say that university probably would have made things a little bit easier. A bunch of young people that are roughly the same age all put together for days and months at a time. Of course that leads to relationships and dating and whatnot. Choosing not to go to college created a gap between me and other people my age of like six to 10 years. I just leaped forward, throwing myself into the workforce, throwing myself into trying to build a career and figure myself out, that when you go to college, oftentimes you don't have to deal with that for years to come. You don't have to deal with that essentially until you're done studying. So again, this decision kind of threw me six to 10 years forward in the timeline of life. And I don't mean that in a boastful way, it, it was kind of lonely. Not joining a fraternity. Just kidding, that's a joke. Honestly, I think that you know, when I die, if there is a hell and I go there because of all my sinful behavior, it would probably look something like a fraternity. Obviously I'm goofing around, but it's really not my kind of thing. Okay, honestly, that's about it for the cons. Onto the pros. I did all the things that I could have done in college on my own. You know, my first point here is just to say that I don't feel like I lived less than anybody else. I don't feel like I've missed any opportunities. I learned foreign languages, you know? I learned how to speak Italian. And I did that at a total fraction of what it would have costed me to get a degree in Italian. It's funny, people sometimes leave comments about how I'm, you know, a trust fund baby or whatever, based off of the lifestyle that I lead. 
And that's not even remotely true. My parents never financed my travels. You know, the ironic thing is that everything I've ever done still costs way less than a degree at NYU, for example. This was an argument that I made in my last video. Instead of studying Spanish in college, for example, you could very easily go live in Ecuador or Argentina or Spain, learn the language much more intimately, have an incredible cultural experience, and spend less money. It would be less expensive. That this huge chunk of time that I've had was an opportunity to essentially learn how to start businesses or learn new languages by moving to different countries or whatever. Like essentially getting their education in the real world versus in a classroom. My point here is just to say that the world is out there waiting for you and you don't need anybody's permission to go out there and start learning. I make a big effort to try to show that, you know, you're not necessarily a failure if you don't get a degree. Essentially, I'm just hoping that this video will help some people at least consider their options. You know, there's no right or wrong. It really just depends on what your priorities are. Career momentum. So it's important to note that building a career for me was far from an immediate success. As I've shared before, and I think this is a really important point, it took me four years of posting videos on YouTube before anything took off. I probably made a total of three or $400 from YouTube in the first four years. There are many privated, cringy videos that you guys have never seen. I also started two other channels that are now abandoned and there was an endless supply of self-doubt. Like, is this ever gonna work? Back in 2016, my total income for the entire year was less than $8,000. And that came from work that I was doing on the side to essentially keep this content creation dream alive because the content creation was not making any money as I've already established. So it's been really tough, but things have come an incredibly long way since then. And I would 1 million times prefer being in this situation right now than just starting out the whole process, even with a master's degree. And this is very personal to me, but I ended up getting really lucky in that I took a leap into something that I saw a future in, I saw potential in, and all of that work, all those first four years, led me to be in the perfect position to totally take off just before the pandemic and then ride that wave of the pandemic. Okay, so there's definitely more I have to say on the topic of not going to college, uh, but I decided to come outside and change it up a little bit, get a little bit of Mexican sun. Honestly, as I said that, this, the cloud goes by, so I'm a little bit not lucky in that regard, but I'm in Mexico. I mean, I cannot complain. Also, look at that depth of field. I mean, it's nice to change it up a little bit. Too much time spent editing and writing inside. I wanted to talk briefly about the sponsor of this video, which is Audible. Audible have been supporting my channel for years at this point. I'm extremely grateful for their support. So right now I'm listening to Ham on Rye by Charles Bukowski who was such a fascinating author. He has such a unique voice, I find him enigmatic. I've quoted him before on this channel. And I think Ham on Rye is a good title to start with if you don't know where to begin with Bukowski. To be perfectly honest with you, I have found it quite nice to listen to books that are not self-help right before going to bed as a way to unwind. Audible has an unbelievable selection of audiobooks and podcasts in their library. And the way it works is when you're a member, you get one credit each month that's good for any title in their entire premium library, which you then get to keep forever. You can start now with a 30-day Audible trial. Oh, there you go, there comes the sun. Ha 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 ha, that's what I came for. <laughs> Choose one audiobook and get full access to the Plus catalog absolutely free. Just visit audible.com slash Nathaniel Drew or text Nathaniel Drew to 500, 500 The link is also in my description. Also, as I mentioned, new members can try Audible for free for a month, so consider checking it out. Thank you so much, Audible, for sponsoring this video. And now, back to the video. Whew. Oh, beautiful sun. The real world isn't a classroom. Do me a favor and compare this video right now, right here, that you're watching, to what I did three years ago, the first installment on my thoughts on higher education. In my view, in every way, things have improved. I mean, the way that I speak on camera, the clarity of the message, the storytelling, the music, the color, the shots, all of it. Why do I make this point? Well, basically over the last six years, I've had nothing but time to just throw myself into my creations, into my projects and just get better, just learn by doing. I've just spent all this time investing in myself, building my skills and developing my craft. You don't learn how to make films in a classroom. I feel very strongly about that. And I think that's true for quite a few different disciplines. Anything that depends on creativity, honestly. So any kind of artistic endeavor, building a business of any kind, you've got to go out and try things. And that's how you slowly improve, iteratively. You try things, you see what works, and then you go from there. That's how you learn. I worked in the film industry before my YouTube channel took off. And the guys that I worked with were like 15 years older than me and would tell me that they'd have film school graduates arrive and not have any idea how to do things on set. They hadn't learned 
set etiquette and how things operate and whatnot. And it's just mind blowing to me, you know, years of studying only to still arrive and not really know at all what you're doing. For me, the takeaway there is that it's inevitable. Whether you go to college or not, you eventually hit the point where you're like, oh, okay, now I have to figure out how the real world works. The real world isn't a classroom. Again, especially if you work for yourself, if you're a freelancer, entrepreneur, artist, etc., etc. Nobody's picking your schedule for you. It's not just about completing the assignment and getting a passing grade. I made this point in my last video, but I find it absolutely incredible that instead of paying an institution to learn a skill, I was getting paid to learn new skills. Sure, yes, I was a nameless PA, a production assistant on set for a while, and that kind of sucks, but you work your way up. And as I work my way up, I started making more money and all the while I'm learning. I'm learning so much, I'm absorbing so much information. I recognize that that's not possible in all industries, but it's just something to really think about, especially as more and more people become their own bosses. More and more people work online or remotely or for themselves. Skills for the 21st century. Not going to college forced me to learn how to learn things on my own, how to utilize the power of the internet. And by the way, incredible. It's incredible the time that we live in. We have so much that is so easily accessible at our fingertips, it's incredible. And I think this is the way of the future. You know, the world demands us to be adaptive. It's changing so quickly now. Done are the days that you get a fixed job that you stick with for 30 to 40 years. And you know, not going to an institution of higher education doesn't mean I didn't develop valuable skills. This might seem like a really bold claim here, but I feel like I got the equivalent of a master's degree in marketing during this time. Running this YouTube channel has really taught me how to capture people's attention, how to tell stories, how to maintain people's attention with constant feedback. Oh, this worked, this didn't work. The two most valuable resources in the 21st century, I think are probably creativity and attention. Learn how to harness those two things and you're set, I think. Easier said than done, but also, like I said, gone are the days of you graduate with a degree, you get a job, and you can just check out and ride that wave all the way to the end of your life. No debt. Man, this has to be one of the biggest points on this list, honestly. It is insane to me that in the US at least, but increasingly in other parts of the world as well, that we saddle people with so much debt before they've even gotten a chance to start out in life. I knew very early on that I did not want to have any sort of debt whatsoever, or at least the bad kind of debt, you know, student loans, credit card debt. I feel like that kind of thing can turn you into a prisoner. Look, I knew this was gonna happen, but I have friends who have tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt, student loan debt, and I question if their education was worth that. I also question if they're ever going to be able to dig themselves out of that. Okay, check this out. This article says that the average net worth of a 24 year old American is a negative number. Think about that. It says right here, negative $28,706. Bro, that is craziness. You know, of course, college or university doesn't have to be mind-bogglingly expensive, right? I mean, there's community college, there's also many countries where it's free or very cheap. But for me, this was a very big factor, and it's bigger than that. It's about the principle. I am not going to become your prisoner. I saw a far better way to invest my time and energy. And just like any intelligent investor, they're gonna pick the stock they think is going to increase most in value, right? Or give themselves the best odds, right? And I did the exact same thing with my own life, with my own time and energy, adding all this up. What do I think? It's probably pretty obvious. This still remains probably the best decision of my entire life. Or if not, I mean one of the best decisions I've made in my entire life. I don't regret it at all, not for one second. And I feel like I'm still seeing the compounding effects of this decision to this day. There's a really important caveat that I should add here that a lot of people pointed out in my last video, which is that this of course becomes a lot more complicated of a decision if you come from a less developed country. And I totally recognize that privilege plays a huge role here. All I'm doing is honestly just sharing my personal experience, which is the only thing I can really comment on. I hope that you found this enlightening. My advice, if you care to have it, is to take your time before making such a massive decision. Take a gap year to start, you know? I don't think that hurts at all, especially as a young person trying to figure things out. And you can always get a degree later on. Getting back all that time and energy and money is not so easy. I wanna send all of you my love and appreciation for all of your support including to the haters to leave comments because you're boosting me in the algorithms. Keep it coming. I'll take it. I'll take all the likes and dislike. Well, I'll take all the likes mainly and comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. If you went to college, if not, how you feel about it. It's a nuanced subject, you know? I don't claim to have the whole truth, but I wanted to share my thoughts. I thought this could maybe be valuable for somebody who's considering their options. Obviously, I'm not telling anybody how to live their lives, but maybe you could take something away from this. All right, with all that said, 
I'll see you guys soon.